Silly is going to be coming out on Combo Blu-ray Combo Pack on f March 8th, and also on DVD and Digital HD. And we're happy to have William Townsend here with us today. Thanks for uh, coming on and talking with us. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. This is, this is great. So, okay, first of all, open season. I, I, I loved, I, I saw the original one, and I really liked the animation style, I liked the humor. Um, I think it's really great to see more animation shows cross over to, like, adults and stuff like that, because back in the day, it seems like you had a lot of people more interested in anything that wasn't animation. They thought it was for kids. But obviously, Simpsons, all these other stuff has come out. Uh, can you just tell us about, you know, what brought you to, to the fr uh, franchise and what you like about it? Oh uh, yeah, uh, when the first fran when the first movie in the franchise came out, I think I was probably about fifteen or sixteen. Um, so I, I remember seeing it in theaters and I loved it. And uh, I just kind of like the mix of animation that's originally thought for you know more of a children's entertainment with more adult humor, as you mentioned, like The Simpsons. Uh, that it kind of combines that where it, it reaches out to a broader audience than just Saturday morning cartoons for kids. And, and so I hope that, uh, you know, in this movie, we're able to entertain kids, but also uh, a broader audience from there as well. Can you tell us about your role uh, in particular in the film? Yes, uh, I am the voice of Elliot the deer, uh, which you can see behind me uh, right there, as well as uh, Mr. Weenie, the uh, little German wiener dog nice. that uh, follows Elliot around for most of the movie. Uh, so I'm two of the characters in there, uh, which is, is which is awesome. Uh, probably one of the coolest things I'll ever do. As far as just getting into voice acting, because it's, it's, it's awesome. We've had opportunity to talk to people who've done voice acting before. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they talk about the difference between having to do multiple voices and then just coming in and, like, doing your voice. Either way, it takes a skill. You have to learn your lines, do everything, get into the character. Can you tell us about, like, your method in voice acting? Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is actually uh, my first uh, feature film doing voice acting. I kind of uh, fell into this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still learning as I go. But uh, it worked out well with the two characters that uh, Elliot is essentially myself. He's a very overly enthusiastic person that just tells his ideas to the world, whether people are listening or not. Uh, so it's basically me with, you know, on caffeine, uh, as, as I like to put it. So that one was very easy for me to go into the booth and just be myself. Uh, didn't have to change much of who I was. It was just kind of get a little more excited uh, than I normally am, which is already pretty much uh, very excited, and just kind of turn that into a character from there. Uh, Mr. Weenie, the wiener dog, is not me at all. He is a overly, he's essentially, you know, a dog emotion character where he's either overly excited or overly sad uh, German wiener dog, which I'm definitely not. Uh, so he was a little bit harder to get into uh, as a character, but. It, his voice was something that I'd been doing my whole life as a camp counselor. Uh, I grew up uh, being a camp counselor, and we always used to do silly voices with the kids, and his was just one of them that I did, and it naturally fit into the character. So that was, that was pretty easy as well. It worked out. Now, for people that don't know, what is it actually like when, when you go in? Because I've seen some, of course, behind the scenes where, you know, you see either maybe stills or sometimes you do actually get to see some of the animation. How did it work when you were, like, doing uh, your lines for it? Did you get to see animation, or was it just stills, or how did it go? Uh, it was just uh, still. So what, what they have is uh, they'll do storyboard recordings for, uh, you know, until they lock down a script, which is the simple black and white drawings. And so you can see those uh, edited to how they want the scene to look, but it's still not animated. It's just very rough sketches. So they know the timing of how they want the scene to go. They don't actually start animating anything until they have your lines uh, recorded and pick the ones that they like best because they don't want to start animating the character's mouth or movements until they know exactly what the character is going to say, um, like the kind of intonation, when their arms would go up, when they would start walking. Uh, so I was actually in there with just very rough sketches and then the director uh, to kind of telling me how the scene would go. He's like, all right, in this one, your character just, you know, got launched out of a mine car. He's very exhausted. So you kind of had to turn that into, you know, that scene. We didn't necessarily do it in order. So you kind of had to jump around and, uh, and kind of imagine where the character was before that scene. Awesome. So, of course, I, I saw in the release, uh, Sony Pictures, you'd be on the set and then talked about how you're an avid gamer. You'd go off and, and, and play games. Uh, was that something where you had like a handheld or did you actually have like an Xbox or PlayStation somewhere in the corner? Uh, no, so I, I actually uh, live uh, about two blocks away from Sony Pictures uh, by chance. I happen to live there. So I, I get to when there's breaks, I can go home. And, uh, and play. It takes me about two minutes on a bicycle. Uh, so I would, I would go home and uh, play PlayStation or Xbox. And then, you know, you'd have like an hour break or hang out, get lunch. And then I could just come right on back. 
uh, and, and record it. So it really worked out well for me that I could just take breaks, get away for a little while and, uh, and relax and play some video games. So did you play games a lot like growing up? Like when did it first start that you like games? Uh, it, I think it first started, I remember having a Super Nintendo as a little, as a little kid, but nice. it really kicked off uh, when I first got a Nintendo 64. I think that is the, uh, I still have that in my room to this day, the original one that I got, and uh, that was really what got me going off. The, the Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, all those original Nintendo 64 games, I still play that pretty much more than any other system, uh, just kind of for the nostalgia factor, um, but I think that was when it really kicked off, and I haven't stopped since. As far as modern gaming, did you end up uh, deciding between Xbox, PS4, or did you get both? Uh, I actually, uh, we, uh, my roommate and I got a, P a PlayStation 4. Um, so I did have an Xbox 360 and a PS3, and then when it came down, we didn't want to buy both of them, so we ended up going with the, with the PlayStation 4 just for uh, a, a few games that were coming out. Um, but who, who knows, maybe down the road I can use some of the royalty checks to get an Xbox One as well. But for now, I'm a PlayStation 4 guy. Do you see like a lot of people that you've worked with like in other projects? Do you do you find other kindred gamers? Uh, you know, not not as many as as I would hope. Uh, I, I there are a few people in my office that will go home during lunch and play, but uh, I haven't met too many. I'm sure they're out there. It's just not a conversation that has come up yet. But I, I'm still looking. <laughs> Cool, cool. Now, as I always had a question because, you know, mm -hmm. with acting, voice acting, film acting, you know, there's a skill and then depending on how it works out, you have fan bases that appreciate that. With you also being an avid gamer, you, you've obviously seen where people do pro gaming, things like that, and they excel to a high level. Do you ever think or do you think that even it should be a case that maybe one one day these pro gamers who are at the top of their game would be looked at for their skills like the way actors, actresses are looked at for their skills? I think so. Uh, I think it's a little ways off, but the the gaming industry in general, just in the public eye, has grown so much in the last little while. I think ESPN actually finally has a deal now where they uh, where they're showing you know pro gaming uh, on ESPN, which is huge. Um, and so it's it's not quite there yet, but I think it's getting there. I think it just needs to be in the public eye a little bit longer. Um, but it's it's an industry that everyone's so familiar with already. I mean whether someone actually plays video games or doesn't, everyone knows someone who does. So it's not that weird of a thing for people to get accustomed to. I just think they need to see it on TV a little bit or follow it more online. Uh, and, and, and then I think it will be, yes. So if you were stuck like on an island, and, and let's say you had other things, you had food, everything else that was uh -huh. good, but you need to get your entertainment, you could pick one console and one game, what would it be? All right. Uh, I, would, I would have to pick one that has a, a lot of uh, replayability here. Um, I think my favorite one uh, that would really last me a long time if I was on an island would be uh, Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, for, I have it on the Xbox 360. I know it's been re-released -re -re uh, for the newer consoles, but that's the one that I played it through. And, uh, and so I'd have to say uh, that. that. That you could play for you know thousands of hours and still find stuff around the map. Uh, so that would be my choice. So, of course, in open season, a scared silly, you have your, your two characters. But if, let, let's say someone said to you, hey, you know what? We're going to give you any animal that you want to be. What, what one would you like to voice act? <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Uh, let's see. Well, I think the, uh, the German weeder dog was already as ridiculous as it could be. Uh, the, the guy just runs around and is crazy. But I think, let's see, I, I would say a moose, but that's very close to uh, the deer. So that's, that's not the best answer. Hmm. I, would, I, I think... Uh, Hmm. I'm trying to think, like maybe uh, like a bird, a goofy bird of some kind. Uh, I, I loved the uh, the bird and up. I know he doesn't really speak, but he runs around. Just some kind of quirky, quirky bird that flies in and out. I think that would be my choice, like a puffin or something like that. Okay, what about for a video game character? If you could be, like, let's say in a game, if you could be in, in that world, uh, what video game world would you like to be in? Like a Grand Theft Auto world, a Mario Brothers world, Sonic, something well, like that? For voice acting or actually like being in actually the Actually just being, like you could visit it. Oh, well, I definitely wouldn't pick Grand Theft Auto. That was <laughs> uh, you know, no justice there. It was just cars driving around all over the place, stuff exploding. Uh, wouldn't pick that. Um, maybe maybe on a happier scale, um, definitely somewhere in the Mario worlds. Uh, I, I like racing games, uh, so I think Mario Kart would be the best, but then again, you're getting hit with shells. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, a nice peaceful a peaceful game where you know, nothing would happen to me. Um, so probably a Mario World, but then I'd you know get hit by a mushroom or blocks would fall on me. You know, they're all very dangerous. Or either that, um, you could just decide I'm just stand here at the beginning of the game and just just chill yeah, <laughs> until I can get out. 
you go worry about the fireballs and Bowser. I'm, I'm just going to chill here and wait till you guys get back. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, the film is from Sony Animated Pictures, and it's open season scared straight. Uh, scared silly. I keep saying skilled straight. I don't know why. I, I, you know what it was? I'm I'm used to. I remember seeing those documentaries back in the day where they'd force you <laughs> to, yeah, to to bring the kids in, and it's like, yeah, this is this is a good verse. Scared silly, not scared straight. Yeah, we're not sending <laughs> any of our characters to prison here, uh, you know, to help them with their future. Uh, maybe <laughs> yeah. that's in the fifth one, but we're, we're we're not sure where that's going yet. <laughs> no, but the film is open season. Scared silly and is coming out on Blu-ray, uh, DVD, and also digital HD downloads that you can get on March 8th. So thanks, uh, Will, for coming and talking with us today. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. This was a blast.